Hello. In this exercise, we're going to look again at the code that we used to generate multinomial trials and see how we can use this same idea to generate a Poisson random variable. Before we get to that, however, let's first briefly summarize that you, the code that you wrote in the last two exercises for generating discrete random variables with more than two outcomes. As I discussed in the last video, we can generate these random variables by using the elements of the probability mass function to draw a segmented line as shown here. Any code to generate a multinomial trials starts by generating a uniform random variable, u, and then uses this segmented line to make a decision about the value of the final multinomial trial. As shown in the code on the right-hand side of the slide here, the value of the multinomial random variable is set equal to zero if the uniform random variable falls within the blue segment of the line. If the uniform random variable falls within the green segment of the line, by contrast, the random variable is set equal to one. Lastly, if the uniform random variable falls into the red segment of the line, the multinomial trial is set equal to 2. As discussed at the start of this video, in order to complete the next task, you're going to have to use an idea similar to the one that we just explained to generate a Poisson random variable. The probability mass function for the Poisson random variable is given by the expression shown at the top of this slide. If we draw the probability mass function on a bar chart, it would look something like this. Well, strictly speaking, it wouldn't look exactly like this, as the Poisson random variable can take any integer value from zero up to infinity, so it is not possible to draw. To see how we can generate Poisson random variables, consider the figure shown here um, that illustrates the segmented line that we would draw for a, multi for a trial that can take values of 0, 1, 2 or 3. As we did for the three outcome multinomial, we, are going, we start by dividing the range between the 0 and 1 into segments with lengths corresponding to the probabilities of getting 0, 1, 2 and 3. This is what is shown here in the multicoloured line. As we saw in the previous slide, we will generate a uniform random variable, u, that falls between 0 and 1. If u falls within the blue part of the line, the multinomial will take a value of 0. If it falls within the green part of the line, the multinomial will take a value of 1. If it falls within the red, it will take a value of 2. And if it falls within the purple segment, it will take a value of 3. Lastly, for obvious reasons, the divisions between the blue, green, red and purple parts of the line are at the values shown here, where P is the probability mass function. Let's think about how we can use this idea to write our Python code to generate the Poisson random variable. The key point to recognize is that the divisions between the colored segments on the previous diagrams were at the values the cumulative probability distribution function takes for the various integer values. The cumulative probability mass function for a Poisson random variable is shown here, and you can see that this can be computed from the probability mass. Furthermore, if you think about the algorithms that we have worked, that we've written, the various possible values the random variables takes, 0, 1, 2, and so on, are worked through sequentially. We can thus replace the if blocks that we have used previously with some kind of loop. With all that in mind, let's consider a flowchart for the algorithm for generating a Poisson random variable before getting on to the actual code we would write. The first steps we must take in our function are shown in this green box. We set a variable called n equal to 0. We set a 
we need to set a variable called pp equal to the zeroth element of the probability mass function, which we can get by using the expression above. And last but not least, we need to generate a uniform random variable between 0 and 1. We now check if the uniform random variable, u, that we generated is greater than pp or not. If u is less than or equal to pp, then we are in the first segment of the diagram that we drew on the previous slide. The Poisson random variable is thus 0 and we can just return the value of n. If, however, u is greater than pp, we do not yet know what segment of the line from the previous slide the uniform random variable has fallen into yet, so we must continue. By the same logic as we have used in the previous code, we thus continue by adding 1 to n, and by adding the probability that the random variable equals 1 to the variable we have called pp. PP is thus equal to P0, P of x equals 0, plus P of x equals 1. In other words, PP is the value of the cumulative probability distribution function at small x equals 1. Having completed these three stages, we can now go back and test if U is greater than PP once more. If this statement is false, we have identified the section of the segmented line that we drew on the previous slide that u is within. We know from the previous slide that, and the logic test that we've just done that u is not less than p of x equals 0, but that it is less than p of x equals 0 plus p of x equals 1, if this logic statement is true at the current time. We should thus set our Poisson random variable equal to 1 if the logic statement is false. The variable n is already set equal to 1, however, so we can simply return this value in this case. If u is greater than pp, then we have still not identified what section of the segmented line u is within. We thus have to continue on and repeat the same steps that we did, that we did in the previous trip, trip through the loop. We set n equal to 2 and then add p of x equals 2 to the variable pp. In fact, we simply need to keep, keep on alternating the steps shown in the plus purple diamond and the red square until the condition shown in the purple diamond is no longer true. Once this condition is not true, the value of the Poisson random variable is equal to n. The insight that we have arrived at in the flowchart from the previous slide is converted to Python code as shown below. Those parts of the code that are highlighted in green complete the actions that are described in the green box. As you can see, these lines set the n, u and pp variables as is described in the flowchart. Three additional variables are set here as well. The variable el is set equal to the negative exponent of lambda. Notice that lambda here is passed to the function as the input argument called lam. We evaluate e to the minus lambda outside the loop, as this is quite an expensive calculation to do, so it is best if we don't do this every time we go through the loop. Notice that we also define two further variables, fact and pow, outside the loop. Both of these variables are set equal to 1 initially. Within the loop, fact is then multiplied by n. As n increases by 1 on each pass through the loop, fact is thus equal to n factorial. The variable pow, by contrast, is multiplied by lam on each passage through the loop. The variable pow is thus equal to lambda to the power n. These two variables are useful as they ensure that we can evaluate the probability mass function for n using the code shown here. 
The loop, last of all, is a while loop because, as is indicated in the flowchart above, we need to continue evaluating the code within the loop while the logical condition here is true. And that is it. That is how you can write a Python program to generate a Poisson random variable. See if you can complete the next exercise and write this code yourself. Good luck.